Yeah, 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 the fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real, that's the only way we know how to be, talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying, straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. A64, yeah. yeah, the F-A-N-A-T-T-I-C, the fanatic, where we keep it OG, we talking sports, so I call it. Welcome into the Fan Attic Sports Channel for sports fans by sports fans. It's your boy Coach I, and you know I got my guy, the Stat Guy, with me. What's up, Stat Guy? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, man! College football week five, and it's been an interesting four weeks plus the uh, week zero. Uh, this week we got Florida State, Wake Forest. We're talking about a huge ACC Atlantic matchup. And um, honestly, just a huge ACC matchup all together, man. How are you feeling about the ACC so far from what you've seen? Yeah, no, I mean, this is definitely a game that, you know, when we were looking at our schedules coming into the season, I definitely didn't have this game scheduled. Um, but Florida State surprising some people. So huge matchup and the shakeup and not only the ACC, but the ACC Atlantic um, should be a good one. That's right, man. It's it's a couple of teams out there. I think Louisville's kind of out of it now. Uh, I ain't going to say out of it because anything can happen. But, I mean, you're looking at Florida State, Wake Forest, NC State, Clemson. And, I mean, Syracuse is scratching on the door as well. So that ACC Atlantic, man, it's like, hey, man, they're going at each other. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, before I go forward, man, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Keep the content coming so we can keep the content coming. Spread it throughout the college football world, man, so everybody can get some of the content. Also, be on the lookout. I know I normally don't drop a video on Sundays, but I'm dropping a video this Sunday. It's my birthday. Be on the lookout for that video dropping on Sunday. All right. So Florida State played um, Boston College this past weekend. And like you said earlier, man, going into the season, I wouldn't have thought that this this was going to be like this. I would have said Florida State and Boston College was going to have a, a, a nail-biter, you know what I'm saying? Because the last couple of years, Florida State is kind of like gave, giving out of gas. Still may, maybe won the game, but, you know, not like they did <laughs> this weekend where they put up 40-plus points. Yeah, no, I think, you know, the big thing is I think while Florida State's been getting a lot of criticism over the last couple of years, they've been moving the needle. And we're seeing that this year with, um, this is a game that, yeah, you're right. They normally probably still win that Boston College game, but maybe it's 24 to 14, 27 to 14, something like that. They pulled off on them. I mean, the game wasn't particularly close at really mm -hmm. any given time. And so um, definitely feels like Florida State's turned a corner. And now this is a huge marquee win. Pick up a win should be Pat House in Tallahassee. I mean, this could be big time for them in that program to continue to move the needle. Yeah, man, I kind of stopped watching the game after it was 31-7. to seven. I was like, Florida State is just doing them dirty like a little brother, like the old Florida State did, man. And you're right, on the on the flip side of that coin, Wake Forest had one of the games of Saturday, man. I think, like, between them and the Wake, uh, the uh, Texas A&M-Arkansas game, man, those were, like, the two games of the day. Uh, not to, hey, not to overlook our guys out in Lawrence, Kansas, man. Kansas and Duke put up a show, too. Kansas coming out of that clean, man. But we can talk about them later. But Wake Forest, man. Wake Forest got three receivers, uh, if not more, <laughs> at least two two to three receivers that's uh, definitely NFL bound. And they were definitely taking advantage of Clemson's inexperienced secondary throughout most of the game, man, except for like towards the end of the fourth quarter and like, you know, part of the double overtime. Like, what do you, why, why Clawson pull off the gas? And I, so first of all, they have five receivers with <laughs> double digit catches. I mean, that's crazy this early into the season. I mean, they spread the ball out. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you look early in the game, they got down 14 nothing. They came back, um, fought themselves back in the game. Then early in the second half, just absolutely embarrassed Clemson secondary. Had those dudes arguing with one another, looking all around. And then, man, personally to me, I felt like they tightened it up in the fourth quarter, wanted to see some of that clock run down. And I know they run that RPO, like that delayed mesh or whatever. And so Clemson was showing them the look to allow them to run it. But if you're going to do that, you – 
you got to fully do it. And then, you know, the big play was there was finally a play where Clemson stuffed it on first down. And so they had been getting six, seven, eight yards on that first down run, which allowed them to stick with it. They hit them for like a two or three yard loss. So now they're behind the chains as far as what they're trying to do within their offense. And it gave them no, no shot. And they, they ended up just running the ball still and taking the three points instead of putting the ball in the air and trying to go make something happen and go get the seven. Which allowed for overtime and then Clemson, you know my theory on overtime. In overtime, the team with the better athletes, better talent just ends up winning. Uh, that's normally how it goes, at least in my eyes. Uh, there's, of course, uh, exceptions to the rule here and there, man. Nevertheless, Wake Forest played a good game, but they did fall a game behind in the a- Atlantic. So this game coming up, both teams need it, but Wake Forest needs it a little bit more than Florida State. Wake Forest has to have it. If they have any hopes of repeating as Atlantic champions, Wake Forest has to have this game. You can't fall two games back and the tiebreaker to Clemson. I mean, that would just be you, – you're looking at – a death sentence right there. But I'll tell you one thing I didn't mention was, you know, we talked about Clemson having the better athletes. To me, at some point, you try to pull an upset like that, you got to roll the dice. Personally, that fourth fourth down around midfield late in the fourth quarter, I think I go for it. I think I roll the dice, go for it, and try not to even let the game get in overtime. But I'm I'm sitting on the I'm sitting on the couch doing a podcast and they're making good money. So it is what it is. Hey, you right about that, man. But on to this week, man, Florida, the Florida State offense has been really humming, man. Like uh, Travis had got hurt for a little while, but I want to say and, uh, it was a Wanamaker, I think his name is. I could be wrong. could be Wannabe. Uh, but the quarterback, old quarterback came in and still played good against Louisville. Uh, but now Jordan Travis is back. And I'm going to tell you, Saturday, dude looked like, like he had, uh, I think, in an interview in the offseason, I think it was like fall camp or something. They interviewed him, asked him how he felt about this year. He said this is the first year he's actually felt comfortable uh, and like him, like himself again, like getting his confidence back. And you can see it on the field, man. Like this Florida State offense is moving. You got Michael Pittman Jr. on the outside. You got <laughs> you got uh, 87. I forget what his name is. That tight end. You got technically you got three running backs. I mean, two of them get bulk of the, the shares of the carry, but. Ward and Trey Hint, Trey uh, Benson is playing off uh, dividends from the transfer portal. <laughs> Huge. Huge. I mean, they're, you know, it's. I think that's one of the big things for Florida State is they're well-balanced. They're able to uh, – they're not one-dimensional. I, I think so many times these last couple of years, Florida State's been one-dimensional, whether they couldn't pass the ball or couldn't run the ball, and then it didn't help that they didn't have a no-line. Um, I know their their offensive line still isn't great, but at least they can mix it up on offense and kind of help them and protect them a little bit. You're not letting just defensive end pin their ears back and come come down the pipe at your quarterback. They're yeah. having to aim, and so being able to mix it up a little bit, you know, and winning cures everything. You win, your offensive line gets confidence. You start running on people, your offensive line gets confidence. Your quarterback's completing passes. I mean, winning and success is a cure for all. And so we're seeing that right now where, man, maybe Florida State's two or three years ahead of schedule. Or maybe maybe my schedule was completely wrong. But, I mean, it it feels like this Florida State team is for real. Not to say they're going out to compete for a national championship this year, but I think they're going to send some shockwaves through that ACC Atlantic. Yeah, and they actually statistically have the number one offense in the ACC with a very balanced attack. And I might be off a little bit on the numbers, but it's like 277 passing, two like two a little bit over 200, maybe 220 something rushing. Like like you said, man, very balanced. And you are right, man. Winning does cure everything. It's like you just need a little belief, a little confidence. Uh, you know, when we were coaching basketball. You know, all you, like if you had a, a scorer and he's having an off night, all he needs to do is like maybe get fouled and, and shoot a free throw, see that ball go through the rim. And it's, that's kind of once you see the ball go through the rim, now you're like, okay, now we're here. Now we're ready to play. And that's kind of how Florida State looks now. And and we all know the Wake Forest defense ain't great at stopping people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> look at the, the game bad. against – you know what I'm saying? Look at the game against Clemson. But that's been, that's been their calling card for some time now. 
Um, so that's going to be interesting because I listen at this point in the season, it looks like Florida State's. I mean, you got Wake Forest just took on a very tough physical Clemson team who Will Shipley, you know, he's a he's a tough running back. That's just one guy, though. He's they're going to have to face Florida State like two, maybe even three guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, another big thing about this matchup is you look at Clemson. Clemson's more of a traditional hurry fast-paced team, 80, 85 plays a game, get the ball up and down the field, um, take some shots. And so it kind of got into a track meet, which I think fits both of those programs, where Florida State is a lot more balanced. Um, they run just as much as they pass. Um, and so I'm interested to see what they do when they come out and punch Wake Forest in the mouth with the run game, if they're able to establish it and what that can do then to open up the passing game for them. Yeah, they were a lot faster under Chad Morris back in the day. I think Clemson wants to be the balanced team. I like to say uh, I don't know the the, the play count, but uh, DJ played good, and I think he plays better not going fast. It, you know, I don't know how, how fast they really go, but uh, yeah. Listen, Wade Forrest has got another challenge on hand because if I had to pick one right now, I'd say like consistently. Florida State is playing more consistent that uh, their offense is playing more consistent than Clemson's offense. So if I'm not saying it's not a transitive property like, oh, Clemson scored 50 plus, so they're going to score 50 plus or whatever. Right. But it's definitely going to be a challenge. On the flip side, Wake Forest is is uh, basically like, it, they're not all pass, but they're pretty much like 70 percent pass, 30 percent run. When you look at the, the stats for the yardage now, they, I don't know about the stats for the number of plays for each uh pass and run but i know yardage wise it's it's definitely a discrepancy like they only they only got like 113 yard average per game rushing but like well over 300 yards per (laughs) passing per game interesting to see them go against this florida state defense who actually has a very good pass defense uh they're like top three if not number one in pass defense in the uh acc yeah no you know the a big thing, I mean, you look at back to that Clemson game. Wake Forest had 10 yards rushing in the first half. And I know they they then kind of made that a staple during the third and fourth quarter, whether I liked it or not. Um, and that's what they used to gain some yardage to get over that century mark. But, I mean, Clemson held them to 10 yards rushing in the first half. And so I, I just don't know if that formula is going to work against that Florida State defense. If you yeah. come out one-dimensional with them, um, I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, but, you know, Wake Forest has kind of this funky offensive style, and it works for them. It, I mean, everybody knows what's coming, and yet they're still successful with it. So should definitely be some good matchups on Saturday. Yeah, no Jermaine Johnson like last year, but their, their front seven has been solid. And if they can create pressure with their D-line and, like, maybe one linebacker and then drop some people, that's going to hurt uh, Wake Forest a lot because if uh, Wake Forest can't keep you honest with that, like you say, that slow mesh, then they're going to kind of struggle. But, I mean, we haven't seen a lot of people, especially with Sam Hartman under center, stop the Wake Forest offense, you know, hold them under 30 or nothing like that. I think last time they got held under 30 was uh, against Clemson last year at uh, at Clemson. So, <laughs> Well, and, you know, one of, the, one of the things that's very strange about that Wake Forest uh, offense is it's very over the top. They don't run – I mean, they go, they go up and over the top on everybody. And so, I mean, it wasn't just Clemson they were hitting that on. I mean, that's just kind of who they are. I mean, they hit some intermediate stuff to move chains and everything, but they, they like to try to push the, push the pace and um, air the ball out and really look, look downfield to make passes. And so – if Florida State can get some pressure just with their front four, maybe bring in a safety or a linebacker or something, definitely going to be interested to see if Sam Hartman can – we know he's willing to stand in there and take the hit and make the throw. Um, but what can the defense do as far as locking people up and covering them and not getting beat deep? Yeah, I think it's going to be – it's a good matchup because Florida State played a good wide receiver in Keishon Butte, who, you know – I don't know what was going on. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't quit, you know, <laughs> give up in the, in the second half. But uh, they did a good job on him. Um, and those other athletic wide receivers that LSU had. But I don't know if LSU had a great quarterback. You know, Jaden Daniels is okay. Uh, 
And then when you look at uh, Boston College, Boston College, Phil Jakovic is a good quarterback, but he doesn't have the wide receivers that Wade Forrest has. Wade Forrest has the wide receiver combination and quarterback combination to really try to, like you said, go over top and test this secondary. So it's going to be the first real, like, test that uh, Florida State, I think, totally has seen on offense and vice versa. I mean, on defense and then on vice versa, Wade Forrest. They're going to see uh, – you think the Clemson's defense got those guys, but with the safety being hurt and then the inexperienced DBs, it's going to be a good fight, man. I, I see this game – I see this game. Man. I can see this game high score, to be honest with you, man. So. Well, and, you know, one thing that neither one of us have brought up is Wake Forest also has um, the most senior-laden offensive line in the country. They've made mm-hmm. more starts together than any other offensive line in the country. And those guys have been through it. And so Clemson, Clemson did have some Jimmys and Joes on the line, but their secondary was just getting flattened out off the rip, and so it really didn't matter. And so I'm interested to see what – if Florida State can do a better job covering in the back end, what it can allow them to do on the front side. It should that's, I think that's going to be the battle I'm looking forward to all day is that Florida State defensive line versus that Wake Forest offensive line. All right, man, it's that time of the show where we give our predictions and then we'll give a key to the game, man. I'll go ahead and start. I think, I, like I said just a minute ago, I think this is going to – they're going to score some points. Both teams are going to score some points. I think I, th- I think it's hard to just say you can stop Wake Forest, uh, uh, you know, even if you can mess up that mess point. I don't think – I think they rely on the run just to keep you honest, to be honest, honest with you. And if they are running successfully, then you could be in a lot of, tro- in a lot of trouble. I think the key to the game is going to be mentality. Wake Forest is used to being – like these last couple of years, Wake Forest is used to winning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they didn't – these two teams didn't play in the COVID year, but in 2019, 2021 – uh, both times at Wake Forest, of course, uh, they did beat Florida State. Uh, they hadn't beat Florida State at in Tallahassee since 2008, which goes to Florida State's mentality. But now Florida State's trying to get over that hunt where they're they're winning on a consistent basis and not win one, lose one, win one, lose one, or nothing like that. So I think mentally it's like we just saw where, to me, mentally Wake Forest thought about how they had lost to Clemson 14 straight times. And then they couldn't finish at the end. But when it comes to Florida State and everybody else outside of Clemson, Wake Forest kind of has that confidence. Florida State's on this 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 run right now. They're doing good, winning, and looking confident. Can they keep that confidence up and go against uh, this Wake Forest offense? So I'm going to say this game is going to be like uh, – ah, man, I see this game like 38-34, something like that. That's what I, I'm gonna go 38 34 Florida State because they're playing at home. They had like again, they hadn't played them at home since 20, uh, 2018. And I think they are a lot more confident at this stage, just in this season, than Wake Forest coming off of that Clemson loss. Yeah, you know, I I think the I think that Wake Forest loss to Clemson was a gut punch. They had them, you know, and that that's a game that they kind of let slip from their fingers. And how do you rebound from that? Um, you now come on the road, you go to Tallahassee, you go to a school that's kind of filling themselves, kind of got their mojo back. Um, man, this is a this is a statement game for Florida State. This is a top 25 matchup at home at Dope Campbell. Um, man, look, I'm telling you, the, the chop is going to be going. Um, and I, this is probably going to surprise some people, but I think Florida State's going to do – do something that we said a lot of people don't do, and I think they're going to hold them under 30. Um, I'm mm. taking Florida State 34 to 19. There it is, man. You got it. You got the predictions from Coach I and the stat guy, man, the fan at it, man. Get in with your score predictions down low in the comments, man, uh, whether you think Florida State or Wake Forest is going to win and what you think the actual score is going to be. And if you have a different key to the game that we might have overlooked or missed, let us know in the comments as well, man. For stat guy. This is Coach I, the fan addict. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. We out of here. Yeah. We got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan addict. Let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?